News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline live on this uh, very special Poya day. Um, I thought we'd begin today by listening to one of Asia's greatest political leaders, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Let's listen to what he had to say, especially about Sri Lanka. Every time I read about Sri Lanka, I ask myself, could they not have stopped it before it got to this stage? Because at this stage, it's not stoppable. Jaffna Tamils versus Sinhalese. They have been on the same island for 2,000 years, different parts of it. Jaffna Tamils in the northeast, Sinhalese in the south. The British brought them together. Railroads, communications, uh, recruitment of the civil service by competitive examinations and the Jaffna Tamils came south and took up many of the civil service jobs. Then came the rivalries after independence, switched from English to Sinhalese as the official language in order to exclude the Jaffna Tamils from the civil service and so on and so on and so on. In reaction, the Jaffna Tamils organized for federal separateness. Eventually, they got nowhere. Finally, they went for Tamil Elam, which means independent state. And the Tigers and the, all the rest of it. If, right from the word go, the government had been committed to maintaining a plural society, and any group that advocates separateness had been dealt with, they would have dealt with fractions of society. Detain them one year, two years, three years, cut off their influence, isolate them, debunk them, release them. It would never have come to this. Now, it cannot be reversed. There's so much passion and hatred. It's, you're going to have Sri Lankan maids for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Well, what else is there to do? You're not going to have economic development. Real words from Lee Kuan Yew on Sri Lanka's uh, problems. Let's find out. Is Sri Lanka's health sector in a real crisis or is, are people just saying that? Let's find out, shall we? My guest this evening is Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva, Chairman, the Professional Forum of Physicians on Medical and Civil Rights. Um, <clears throat> hometown Tango. Present here on Newsline Live, Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva, very good evening yeah, to you. Very good evening. Um, is Sri Lanka's health sector in a critical state? Yeah, the Sri Lanka health sector is facing a devastating situation. Why we are telling that is the is a Sri Lanka is a country where we deliver the free health care service to the people, or the public. So they expect that the health care delivery to their doorstep level and even the poor people, whether poor or the economic high class, they expect the government uh, should have to look after them. So this is what has happened in the last nearly seven decade period. Mm. But now what is happening is that the people facing a severe crisis to get in to their, as they expected the supply from their health services. So one aspect, the health service is deteriorating, then the drug supply, the drug supply change is facing a severe crisis present way. And the, uh, the majority, some of the hospitals, they have to cut down their the limitations that they have to go for the, doing the surgeries. Mm. So the, even the public sector and also with the, uh, we are giving the service to the emergency services, the tertiary and the secondary level to the public sector. So all the sector level that we are facing this crisis now. So uh, this is the, actually we have alarmed this for last nine to uh, 10 months period, unfortunately. So now you, you brought this up to the notice of the yeah, we have we have brought this issue firstly nearly the last March, mm. that time the state minister of uh, the drug and the supply, we uh, wrote him about the, this situation and we should alarm that we should take initial steps, but unfortunately mm. this was neglected by the authorities. So the, we want to prevent this going to the disaster situation. So health test uh, might go for the disaster situation if we are not take actions right now. But now itself, now we are forward into the disaster situation. Um, 
so uh, is there a drug and medicine shortage yeah definitely because uh, we in the health sector we are giving the essential drugs non essential drugs vital drugs to the patient mm. so when the, when we think of the emergency setup the yeah. emergency care the icu cares they are facing the shortage of the drugs medicines and the operation theaters they are facing the one of the anesthetics drugs and the, the suture materials and the what we need for the instruments and for the the needles suture material catheters ng tube ic tube so like this that is a very serious problem yeah this is a serious problem unfortunately uh, this is a serious problem but unfortunately as is still this is not affect to the high class people because the, they can go to the mount elizabeth or whatever it is and they can get the treatment in singapore but, yeah <laughs> but the poor people suffering this one what about private hospitals private hospitals are the same because the in the in the current situation we are having the two problem one is the we don't have the enough supply drug supply change to the country the mm -hmm. public sector as well as the private sector because the private sector is facing this because of this dollar crisis and the, their companies they can't uh, open the 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 bank guarantees and mm -hmm. thing and they can they can't uh, brought the drugs to this here so this is actually a direct result of the dollar crisis the public sector health problem is not a direct result of the health cri uh, economic crisis because no. it was revealed in the parliament corp and also there are economic reform committee and the auditor general reports this is the for last one year period we got the funds from the asian development bank who mm. then for the uh, other all the so why then the if we got the money from the adb and so on yeah how come we are having a drug shortage yeah so that is why the we identify this as a one of the mismanagement or the as the le leadership problem that the initial steps the authorities are unable to identify there as a drug shortage coming in the next years why is that why, why why can't they identify why yeah that's why we ask president to have an inquiry why the officers and the politicians are unable to identify this drug issue at the initial steps because which president which president to the present president as okay. well as the former president but for the present president we inform to their secretary and even the media we asked why the authorities unable to identify these issues at the right time yeah. because as you know that the medical supply division had the uh, more than 7 million cost the information system mm. but it was revealed that it is not uh, that system does not have a dashboard that reveal the drug issues so if it's like uh, if the dashboard does not uh, alarming mm. to the uh, drug shortage so that does that uh, dashboard is uh, in vain so oh, now, I see. So you're, the, what you're saying is that the dashboard doesn't doesn't raise the alarm when well, there is um, some sort of shortage. Shortage, as well as not only dashboard in the manually also. Usually, when we we estimate drugs for at least one year apart time. Yeah. So when there's a drug shortage happen in 2023, 2024, mm -hmm. so we can identify it right now because there are uh, the protocols and manuals are going on how the our the regional level to provincial and the central level there's the uh, pipeline going on so we can identify this issue and so the the indian credit line adb and the who and other NGO and the, the government and funds they have pumped the according to sources in the parliamentary sources enough financial support to the health system but the right time the right decisions are not being taken so they might wait till uh, maybe the crisis rising them and also the they highlighted that there's a previously unpaid bills are there and it's cost more than several dollar millions that the because of the that they haven't paid for the previous bill so therefore they are not sending the new so the, the drug company is reluctant to send the new drugs to the country how so much do you think how much do you think people are owed uh, suppliers are owed in uh, in the industry, in the medical industry. Yeah, according to the parliamentary source, it I think it's um, uh, nearly twenty to thirty billion rupees. Twenty, 20 to, to thirty, 30 billion, billion or rupees. more than thirty billion rupees for the, the, the bills on hand, but the, they are not paid initially. And what about OPD? The same. The OPD set up also the as in the Sri Lankan set up in the OPD patients. We are giving the even the non essential but the drugs to the patient. Mm. And now the OPD set up also lack of the antibiotics. That means that we are giving prescribing for the cough and the, the patient come with the cough and cold. We sometimes give the antibiotic with the pediatric patient, children's. We are giving the antibiotic and the cough syrups 
and the main items. Hmm. And also the OPD setup uh, in Sri Lankan system we are giving for the clinic setup for the non communicable diseases like diabetic, hypertension, dyslipidemia, renal and the cancer patients. So all these aspects, the special care, mm. the drugs are lack. So then the doctors have to prescribe those drugs from the outside, mm. from the outside pharmacies. Yeah. Then the burden more because the price hijack for the drugs happened last one year period nearly 70 to 100 percent but some drugs have rise up more than 300 percent yes yes i know that because i have diabetes. yeah now let's see that was just a nine month ago the one patient come for the private sector or if we go for the prescription and take for the cough, simple cough and call for three days mm. it might cost around less than 500 rupees but the same prescription current scenario it might cost over 2000 day because the uh, so, so what, really what you're saying, uh, Dr. Chamal, is that perhaps for the first time, yeah. the economic climate of our country yeah. is resulting in people actually neglecting their health care. Yeah. That's what That's is correct. happening. That's correct. And, and, and what can the people do? Yeah. Now this is the first time that the Sri Lankan people, especially the poor, the regional level or the, even the, the f family level or in the state sector, and the people living in the Colombo suburb and other town areas and the state and flats like that way. So they don't have any other way. They have to go to the government sector to get their treatment. Mm. But as the one we are double burden, one is that we are having the economic crisis and political crisis. So these are simultaneously going parallel. Mm. And the, because of the economic crisis, one aspect, the, these poor people, they don't get enough money to live because of the, their income is uh, reducing gradually because the, sometimes the unemployment rising and for the food inflation the, and also the inflation of the financial inflation happen. So they are facing the less income to their pocket. One mm. aspect. Yes, and because also the co uh, the economy has contracted. Yeah, contract in the economy. <coughs> it's inflation. about 10 million de down. Yeah, food inflation. And then the, their economy has come down. And but the, but <coughs> the, because of the inflation, when they go to take their necessity from the outside, mm. they have to pay the double or triple than expected. That is why the University of Peradin exposed that the, during last nine month period, mm. the people below the poverty line increased about 10 million mm. in uh, the March 2022 it was 3 million and now it's 10 million so the our power number of power the people below the power line, line increased threefold during last nine month period because of the political crisis and the economic crisis would you call it a crisis or would you call it a mismanagement yeah the crisis due to mismanagement of yeah. the administrative failure so then uh, these people have to look after their kids, their education, maybe then they have to spend a lot of money for their day-to-day -day activities, traveling costs, the fuel and everything. So then they have to see uh, how we can scale down the day-to-day -day activities. Then the, come the, this health sector, like the, if the patient is suffering the diabetic or dyslipidemia mm. or ischemic, mm. then they think, okay, should I spend 3,000, 5,000 rupees per week for my drug so should I uh, allocate those money for my, my kids? Mm. So then they will definitely select their kids. So because of this one, the first time in Sri Lanka after several decades, now the mobility and mobility might increase due to the poverty. Mm -hmm. So initially, even the poor people can go to the hospital and, and get the, treated, get treatment for the even the severe cases, yes, uh, for the diabetic, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, or even a cancer patient. Yeah. Now. The, as they are not taking the regular drugs, the drug compliance is coming down. So because of the drug compliance is coming down, mm. so mobility and mortality is rising <coughs> and there might be unreported cases, diets happen at home mm. because they are not reported as uh, death due to drug shortage. Mm. Ultimately, the Gramanil Dari or the the person who is doing the post-mortem or maybe in the in, uh, sudden death thing can uh, report it, as it's a uh, natural death. It's absolutely uh, remarkably unaccepted yeah. uh, that what is happening. Uh, for the first time, uh, Sri Lanka's lifespan, life expectancy is being affected yeah. uh, as we speak. Yeah. And the government seemed to be pretty silent on this 
uh, significant matter. Uh, it's almost like in the, under the previous government, President Gota Biraj Paksa, uh, they sort of hid behind the fact that there was very little money for fertilizer, and so they announced a grand plan to move to organic fertilizer. And uh, this government, apparently, is doing almost nothing about the l severe lack of shortages in the medical industry. We'll speak uh, further about this with Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva after this short break, in which we look at the headline news from this evening's uh, primetime news. We'll see you on the other side. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukut Ali. President calls for emergency meeting with the Election Commission. The Commission says an election can only be delayed via constitutional or judicial action. Samagijana Balavegia Alliance to place bonds for the local government election from Monday. Hungwell, a murder suspect, killed in police fire. Social media activist Sepal Amarsinghe remanded. Religious events to mark the Durutu Poya. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Welcome back to Newsline Live. We are talking about Sri Lanka's medical industry in crisis. The life expectancy is being affected for the first time in decades because of the uh, unaffordability of medical care. Medical care has gone up. The drugs and medicines and the clinical supplies have gone down. And therefore, uh, needless to say, the people's lives are being put at risk. Um, D Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva, tell me, should the medical, the Minister of Health, should it be a professional from the medical industry, from the medical field, or can it be a political appointment? Some people say political lackey, but you know, from the political side. What do you, th what do you prefer? As a doctor, what would you say? To be the Minister of Health? Yes. Yeah, uh, to me and our trade union also, we believe that the better the country like Sri Lanka, the Minister of Health should be a, a, the person who is in a medical background is a more suitable than uh, politicians that have a business or the other background. Because the, when the uh, minister from the health care background or the, the medical field, or he knows how the supply chains going on and what are the necessities, and he knows how the rural setup, that means the public sector, and for the community level, mm. these programs are going on. But it, it's not necessary, but better the country like Sri Lanka, if the minister uh, becomes from the health sector or the issue and the health care background. Mm. But even a politician, yeah. let's see about the Lee Kuan Yew, he's an economist. Mm. So if the even the country like the Singapore, India, like that, it's not necessarily. But if the politician have a common sense and if he has a sense about the ground level people, how they suffer if they we are not given the uh, drug supply at on time or the regular basis. But this is the whole problem, Dr. Uh, Dr. Chama. Yeah. The politicians, they go to visit their electorate uh, quite often yeah. when there are deaths amongst their constituency. Yeah. What's the point of going to see someone who's dead? Yeah. Isn't it better to keep regular contact with them so they know yeah. the whole problem? Yeah. Now that we are talking about this, the health crisis for last one year period. What is, and, so what does the health minister and, say? Yeah, that's right. So the once minister exposed that the initial steps, the ministers and authorities said there's no drug shortage. And so that time we uh, showed him the online medical supply division system and that time he identified there's a, there's a drug shortage. And so the, what ministers tell into the parliament is what the authorities or the officers given the data to him. So he revealed that the, 
the office some of the officers has misguided him many ex he uh, mentioned that to the journalism journalist also that mm. the officers misguided him so the minister misguided the parliament and president so right. this is uh, going it's a like chain reaction that's a chain reaction even the once the present president mm. honorable ranil vikram singh mentioned that the health sector officials are not giving the real time data to get the decisions so we are living in the fourth generation industrial revolution and the the, the number one matter is the real time data to get the decisions mm. so if we not covered if we not discovered and if we not uncovered the data real data then the administrative level or people who is the decision making level they can't get the uh, actions on time let's see that regarding the the health sector there's a malnutrition issue also you know that the unicef reveal how the sri lanka might face this the food insecurity in the country mm. but unfortunately minister officials rejected those data and expressed in the 26 the he ex they are talking about and getting the decisions with keep their hand with the 2016 data mm -hmm. but how can the, we are getting the decisions with the years old data so we should have a then and their data so this is happening but unfortunately the now i think the president also knows about these incidents but i don't know why he can't get the direct is a executive president yeah. but the executive we are not seen as he execute his power on behalf of the poor people of the country if is a if well he gave uh, the, uh, on his holiday while he was on holiday in the hills <laughs> he authorized 30 acres to be given away to somebody for some project <laughs> yeah. but i don't know i mean uh, do you think he should have done that rather than let a, a government agent do that and he could have yeah. got on with uh, a plan to address sri lanka's 33 plus billion yeah. dollar debt mountain yeah that's right so sometimes we are seeing the politicians attain to the some matters that the ga or the gram seva can attain so the president level or the even the higher level authorities the politicians should attend the national level issues national level crisis so that is why for last one year period we are highlighting these issues we are talking about these issues but unfortunately the majority of the politicians and the higher level officers because they are getting the benefit they are never they have never faced the cut down of their uh, their benefit they are get the travel insurance so the travel uh, the fuel insurance allowances everything they are getting so they are not facing this crisis much not much at most because they are living in the ac room like that is so office to the room office to the home home to office like that day. so if they can come down from the officers to the ground level if they can see how the these people suffering when we go to the field some mothers the parent telling that, that they haven't take the egg to their home for last 6 month period because of the price it's nearly 60 rupees if they have the 3 to 4 kids with the elderly parent so they have to spend nearly 300 to 350 rupees only for the eggs for their one meal Do, uh, dr chamal when uh, you know you we be blaming the officials uh, or the minister said he was misled by the officials yeah um it, this is a tantamount to insubordination um if you are in a corporate environment and if you are insubordinate and you yeah. you do you break the rules you don't listen to your manager or your director or whoever um you're going to get the sack yeah well get a warning letter yeah. and three three times and you're out yeah. but why is it that you know like like the minister is saying something that the officials misled him yeah. shouldn't he interdict them and have them yeah. sent away without yeah. the pension yeah that's the issue so the, we are changing the figure heads every time so that means we are changing the faces every time but unfortunately the system is not changed so the people are not giving Uh, influence to the political system that the not the figure heads or the the head we we the last 74 years this issue that we are also talking that the, we are changing four to five years the faces or the heads but the, we are unable to change get down the system so the the system is the completely the corrupt system is running on and the whatever the whoever the minister this corrupted people get together and continue their With autocracy the and bureaucracy So uh thank you very much for your question 0772300305 we've had several I'll take this one doctor is it that 
the politicians understand and pretend not to understand the situation because of personal objectives. Yeah, that's correct. Because the, every time we are talking about the crisis, health care or education or whatever the crisis, this is now the unlike the present date, we are talking the all the media channels, they, if they listen to the uh, TV channel or even the newspaper headline, then they should know there are several crises going in the country. But as you mentioned, because of their personal objectives, they are not attained to the real matters because as far their main concern is mm. they want to remain in the power as far as they can, not they are thinking about the poor people of the country and they know near the elections they mm. can easily misguide the people and get the votes and come to power for the last four to five years. And do you think, how do you think as a, a medical professional and dealing with people whose lives are even the medical side is severely challenged. Yeah. How do you think the public will react when given a chance to vote at any form of election, local, provincial, parliamentary, presidential, right yeah. now? Yeah, I think the people should give a big alarming sign to the, all the politicians of the country. They should show to the politician that the right now the people of the country are not the same like previously and they are ready to give they are ready to accept the changes and they should give the sign that the if the politicians are not working according to the current uh, crisis identifying crisis yeah. they should have a power of recall at any time and then the people is having then the politician might not go for this type of situations as we know after that all the the past the social crisis happened april to july period like that day now the politician know that they can't wor work like the previous eras even mm. we have seen the several incidents for the government officers some ceremonies also the way mm. some politician came officers and the other people they got up and got went. Up and so this is a good sign. Yeah. But the people should get more and more, get together and give alarming sign to the politicians. We are not ready to follow you as a buffaloes, mm. and uh, they should. We are ready to accept these challenges as well as the public also should identify the leaders from their level, even for the professionals, so they can come and take over these issues. When when you are treating patients and so on. Uh, I, I know that you've paid a particularly high price for talking uh, the truth, but usually, uh, you know, um, responsibility is built on a foundation of truth. And Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva is at the moment in litigation uh, because he uh, has paid the price for being upfront and open and telling people about the, uh, the real issues. But notwithstanding that, Dr. Chamal, when, when you talk to patients, you know, everyday patients, do you get the feeling that they're frustrated with this government? Yeah. They are frustrated, not only the patient, let's see, if sometime I am they usually, with their friends. I am trailing with the, yeah, I am traveling with the sometimes three wheelers also, even by buses like that. So yeah. whenever I go, the majority of the people frustrated about the government because they know one, they have, as I mentioned earlier, because of the economic crisis now that they can't live as they expect. Let's see, now these days, three days, holidays, but I think less than 1% of people can enjoy this travel and enjoy these holidays. Mm. So we are talking to uplift the to, uh, local tourism and industrial level, but how the people from Colombo to go to Tissamaharama, Tangol, Vira Vila, like they enjoy their life with the 20 liter of uh, fuel, uh, per month, per week. Mm. So this is the way. So people have to cut down their life. They have uh, spent 40 years, 45 years to educate like even professionals. But ultimately, now that they can't satisfy the, the whatever it is, the, our last uh, acquaintance is happy. The happiness index is the number one. In the that, that's what we are aiming for. Yeah, that's why what we are aiming. Relaxation and happy happiness index is the number one in the developed countries. So. We are now scaling down our happiness. We are scaling down all of our day to day activities, and we are again go to as a caged ape. Now, in Sri Lankans, they are like a caged ape because they are caged to by the politicians have caged. Only okay, you spend 20 liters, and whatever it is, you scale down your day to day activities to 20 liters. But we won't be doing anything about that yeah. because we are, they are not telling us. 
yeah. how they're saving money. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dr. Chamal uh, Sanjeev, thank you very much for being on News Yeah, Online. thank you very much. For uh, we much appreciate it and we hope that you will communicate to your patients yeah. and to the people that you come uh, into contact with that here at the Capital Maharaja Group and uh, uh, News First uh, Media Stables that we are very much with the people. Yeah. We understand the problem yeah. and we will continue to highlight the people's interests right here on News First. That's the way it was then on News Dine Live. Take care, have a enjoyable as you can weekend and remember always, our wishes are with you. God bless you all. <laughs>